We've actually got scammed and、uh, like catfished by people pretending to be our family asking for money. Oh wow! Yeah. And it worked. Welcome back to Other People's Lives. I'm Joe Sanagato. I'm Greg Dybeck. For anyone out there that wants to be a guest on our show, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can reach us at our email, which is oplpodcast at gmail dot com. Yeah. Also, we never do this. I'm not exactly sure when this episode is going to come out, but we're very close to a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube, and、uh, you know. We want it bad. We're close. I think we're like a thousand away or something. So if you're just listening on audio, or even if you watch the YouTube, you're not subscribed. Go check that out. YouTube.com/slash/OtherPeople'sLives.、Uh, let's hit this milestone together. That, that's all that we ask. Now, with that out of the way, today's topic is very intriguing to us. We're speaking with a woman whose family won the lottery, and. We're talking about a lot of money. We're not talking about like a few thousand dollars on a scratch off, but we'll let her tell the story and give the details.、Uh, but we're excited to hear about what it's like to go through what's such an unexpected, life-changing moment. You know, one that I think a lot of people dream of happening to them. So we've got our super rich guests on the line. Thanks for being here today. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me, guys. Of course, and I'm sorry. I don't. I don't. I don't want to do that. That's that was a that、you、was a poor joke. A bad joke.、Me. Well, yeah, but we're not going to edit it out because very raw podcast. But let's start <laughs> off with the question that everyone wants to know: How much money did your family win in the lottery? So my family, my dad in particular, won seventeen point three million dollars. Wow! And was that like the winning amount, or was that the amount that you guys like walked away with? So that was the winning amount. So where I live, you don't get taxed on the lottery winnings. You just get taxed from what I believe is the income that you could produce from the winnings. So it's tax free. What? Wow. Where do you live? Mars? Like I mean, we're <laughs> in New York. So yeah, we get taxed on. We get taxed if we breathe in New York. I, yeah, eight different times. I mean, I might be giving myself away.、Uh, yeah, I, you don't have to answer that. <laughs> well, I mean, I could, I could say it generally. I live in Canada. Okay. Ah, there we go. That's that, what you got to do. We have、huh? to move and then play the lottery in Canada so that you don't have to pay taxes <laughs>、exactly. on it. So,、uh, when, how long ago did this happen? So this was the end of 2017. Like I think it was. Boxing Day, 2017. So, like, just about going into 2018. So, pretty good Christmas present. Not gonna lie. Well, that just、yeah. gave away that you're in Canada. If you didn't want to say before, Boxing Day. Yeah, Boxing Day. <laughs> <Yeah> . um, <laughs> Sorry. Wait, but so wait, Boxing Day is is that like Christmas or around Christmas? No. So Boxing Day is like Black Friday. So it's the day after Christmas where everything goes on mega sale. So like a lot of people here won't even. I mean, we, I, we don't do this, and I find it kind of odd. Like you don't open presents on Christmas. You go and you buy everyone's gifts on Boxing Day because it's like Black Friday sales. Hmm. Okay.、Yeah. Okay. So you won the、like、lottery on the on like the gift getting day. That's interesting.、Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. So, so do you what was remember- like the initial?、Oh. Yeah, I was gonna ask like, what is the initial reaction that you had? Like your family, like your dad has the ticket, and he's like, "Holy shit, we just won this money!" Like, did、yeah. everyone think it was fake? No. Yeah. Well, yeah. So basically, like, my dad was actually at work when he found it, and、uh, he was like sitting in his office, and he was checking over the numbers, and he thought it sounded crazy, and he went down to like a convenience store or something, you know, and、um, they put it through, and it basically like if you win something, you know what the sound sounds like. It's like da 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 da. But、uh, if there's nothing, or if it malfunctions, it's kind of like a. Like I hate to make a sound effect because it's gonna sound stupid, but it's like a do you know what I mean? Like a something <laughs>、yeah. not right, <laughs> right? Something not right. And so it, the machine actually froze, and then they ended up having to call like the lottery, and、uh, like I'm not gonna say which one because it'll actually give away. But、um, so they ended up having to call like the、uh, lottery and gambling people, or whatever, and、uh, they fixed it and they put the number up on the screen. And my dad said that he looked at it and he thought it said seventeen thousand, and he was like, "Oh, that's pretty good." And then he realized it was seventeen million, and he started freaking out. And、uh, 
yeah, he actually didn't end up telling like myself and my sister for like a week. So I feel like at that time he had calmed down enough to say something and um, we were in disbelief though. It was, it's just one of those things that you actually don't think is going to happen to you. And it seems almost selfish to cry at it, but I did cry just because it was, I don't know. It's, it's just so extraordinary. It's like not one of those things that you ever think will happen to you in your lifetime. Yeah. And that's also an amount of money that like is, you could set, everyone up in your family for life with $17 million. Like as long as you guys aren't like, all right, we're flying private everywhere. Like you could, everyone in the family could be like set up and totally fine. Like houses and shit. Like you're good. You know, like that's definitely worth crying over. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And it kind of came off the heels of, um, like my dad kind of had a tough go and he was let go from his job and it was like a really, not a great year. Um, he was like struggle. Like, I I don't, I don't want to say that we were like struggling, but things were kind of getting a little bit like dicey. Like my sister and I were both um, in school and my parents were like supporting us through school, but we were also like working a lot. Like I I worked my ass off through school and, you know, paying for like all my own things that I could. And they they were definitely like helping us um, with tuition and everything. But when he lost his job, things were not looking great. And we were kind of getting a little bit nervous. And then this honestly seemed like a miracle. Like, I I don't, I hate to say that, but like, it did, it did seem like one. Wow. So it really came at a time where I guess your family was aware of finances. And like you said, not necessarily struggling, but there's, you know, stress, I guess, related to finances and kind of understanding how you guys are going to move forward. So that's pretty wild. Uh, considering the timing. Yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, it was impeccable timing. (laughs) I'm curious, like you mentioned before, just kind of crying. I could almost imagine this family moment of, you know, rejoicing, but do you remember any other, uh, kind of initial emotions that hit you? I just imagine that there'd be so much that comes with this, like winning money, like you're, you're essentially being handed money for free. So I'm curious, you know, any other thoughts that kind of went through your mind and kind of the days or weeks after learning about the winnings? Yeah. So, I mean, at first, other than the initial reaction of, yeah, crying, it's when he first said it, it was like, I thought that he was joking. It's like when someone says something like that, like something so jarring, you, you can't help but think like, that's not true. Or I didn't hear that. Like I hear that on like movies and TV, like people don't say stuff like that, like news like that. So I was shocked. And then I think like all that I could think about was how things were going to change. Um, like how our lifestyle would possibly change. And Honestly, I was just really nervous right away about what other people were going to say to me, um, like what people were going to think if, if people even found out, um, cause I was, I was still, you know, we were still like living in like our, our hometown and everything and things get around quickly. And so I think I was just kind of nervous about the aftermath of it as well. Um, I know it's like not great to like think so pessimistically when something great happens to you, but I I guess I'm just like a pessimist and no, no, it's why I asked the question because I, I could imagine those feelings being pretty strong in the beginning. I guess sort of what you're getting at is like, are there suddenly going to be judgments placed on you or expectations or assumptions once people kind of find out now you guys have this money? I think that's, you know, super fair and valid feelings to have. Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't um, like, I mean, right away, the first week or so, I would say no one was saying anything. It kind of started trickling in after, um, which is like, you know, uh, it's not something that I think anyone ever really wants to deal with, you know, to have someone asking you questions like you owe them an answer um, is not a great feeling. And, uh, you know, especially people that you don't know very well reaching out to you coming out of the blue and saying things is like an extremely uncomfortable situation. Like even, I don't know, maybe that's just for me, but I don't like having to explain things that I think are like pretty sensitive. Like I think finances is like a really sensitive topic and I would never dream of if I saw someone that I knew, like, and I don't know if I just have this frame of mind now that this has happened to me, but if I saw someone that I knew 
won the lottery or had a bunch of money or they had a great job and they got a really good salary, just anything like that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel entitled to know any more information than what they come to tell me first. Like I would never be the first person Mm. to go bring up a conversation and to have people message you like, so how much was it? Or like, can I, can I have money? Like people would always send me jokes and be like, can I have a million dollars? I'm like, that's first of all, it's not funny. And like, also if, if I was going to give it to anyone, it wouldn't be you. So (laughs) um, like, it's just, you know, it's just not a great situation. Um, but you kind of get past it. Like it's been a couple years now and some people still say stuff, which I think is like, okay, the joke's over. Like it's kind of boring now, but, um, Yeah. So, I mean, also, was there any immediate, like, big purchases? Because at least in the States, when people win the lottery, it's like a famous thing that a lot of them just, like, crash and burn. They lose the money and they're, like, broke now or, like, they died or something. Like, a lot of people, like, spiral after it. Like, there's multiple. I was just looking at the other day because we just had, like, the biggest lottery in history uh, recently. So all these articles were popping up. So many people win the lottery and the ones that decide to like say who they are uh, and become this basically overnight celebrity or whatever, like usually it doesn't really pan out for them in some way. So I'm interested in like, you know, you talked about earlier, you were wondering how your lifestyle would change. Like did your lifestyle change? What was the big purchases in the beginning? And you know, what sort of like plan did your parents kind of like put out for like, okay, we have to make this last or was it like, we're going on a vacation right now. <laughs> yeah. So, um, it, it's actually funny that you mentioned that. Like I reached out to you guys because I just heard the basement yard episode from Monday when you and Frank were talking about the lottery and all like how people have to basically go rogue. Like you have to not talk to anyone yeah. cause, or people just, yeah, they crash and burn and, um, they take, uh, they kind of use all their money right away and all that stuff happens. So, um, I mean, immediately the big purchase, and I I don't even know if it was like a big purchase. It was just, it was a really nice vacation we took. Like two months later, um, we kind of just jetted off for two weeks. Everyone took two weeks off. And this is, I I like feel so gross saying stuff like this because I know it's like a flex, but I think that's the whole point of the conversation and just (laughs) feel strange because I've never like actually like spoken to anyone about this stuff before, but Um, we had like an amazing villa that we stayed in and we had, um, a chef that was there all day and we had, um, like a housekeeper that did literally everything for us. And it was honestly such an odd feeling because again, like I've never had anything like that in my life to have someone literally waiting on you hand and foot and doing like anything, like picking up your dirty clothes and doing your laundry and making whatever you want for every meal. It's just it's just the strangest feeling ever. Um, so that was that, that was the first like really big thing. And then I think the next thing we did was everyone got uh, new cars. Okay. Uh Okay. I like this because if, if you would have been like, well, we all just started to send our savings. I'd be like, fuck this. But like, yeah, let's get some new (laughs) cars going. Let's get a fucking chef in here. Like I'm, I'm glad that, you know, there's a, there's a definitely a healthy balance between like, don't go insane. And like, you know, your dad's buying fucking grills or, and like chains and shit or something, but like, <laughs> you know, like going crazy like that, like jewelry, but like, you know, yeah. F- awesome family vacation. Everyone gets cars. Like, I think that's totally normal and like what anyone would do. Yeah. And not to, I forgot to mention that, not to say that before this happened, like before we made these purchases, we did give money to every person in our family. So I think it ended up being Mm. every, like all my aunts, uncles, cousins, whatever, everyone got 25 grand each, I think. That's really cool. Okay. We were just talking about that the other day, Joe. We were, we were, I mean, it was like a billion dollars that we, that you would have won. Uh, and like one person in California won it, but like we we were talking about like how you would chop that up and like who would get money and who wouldn't get money. So that's cool that you get to like, this is the first time we've ever spoke to anyone who like has won the lottery. So it's cool that you guys were like, yeah, we're going to give money to everyone. And you still have obviously like a ton left over. Um, but that's really cool. So now you guys, I'm assuming you live in a new home and not the same home. Yeah. So we live in the same town. Um, 
again, not going to give myself away, but the town is like kind of split down the middle of being like one side is like pretty middle class where we had lived previously. And then one side is like a lot more wealthier. So we just moved, um, onto the wealthier side. I hate to say that. And, uh, yeah, just like a different house. Um, really cool area. Yeah. We got our cars and everything. And, uh, um, I hate to say live in the dream, but like that's so stupid, but, uh, um, <laughs> what car did you get? And did you, you get to choose your car? I did get to choose my car. Was there a limit or was it anything? I mean, like, I can't, I can't be like, I want a Ferrari. Like I can't say anything. Yeah. Like yeah. It's still my dad at the end of the day. And he's like, you are not driving something that's, you're going to like blow up. Like you're not going to drive <laughs> yeah. into a wall or whatever. So I actually wanted a, a cheaper car. Um, and my dad wanted me to get a more expensive car. So, um, I got a Mercedes. Um, nice. Yeah. My mom got a Porsche. Okay. Um, Fucking go, mom. Let's go. I know. She didn't hold back. My mom. <laughs> she's like, fuck that. I'm getting the Porsche. <laughs> yeah. She's like, she's balling and she's cool. And uh, <laughs> my dad got, um, he's actually, my dad, see, this is the thing. It's because it is his money at the end of the day. He changes cars like people change underwear. Like he, <laughs> so yes. he went first. He went, uh, um, uh, BMW X6, I want to say. Um, okay. And then he went... Uh, what did he do? Oh, and then he had a Mercedes AMG. Nice. And mm-hmm. then uh, he's back on... Um, he has a BMW again, an M5. Um, and then we have a vintage uh, Porsche 911. Mm. And... Um, process of getting another vintage porsche okay is he almost collecting cars at this point like is your driveway or garage just like does it look like a like valet parking at a super nice restaurant (laughs) there's nowhere to park like if we have people over it's like i'm sorry like you might get a ticket on the street because like we actually don't have anywhere to park it's it's like full up wow how are you like process like what stage are you at now of processing this because it's it's just interesting to hear someone in this position. Like you are owning these circumstances, which I, I think you have to. This is something that, you know, happened to your family. But you also keep prefacing things with, you know, I, I feel bad saying this or making a face before you say like the wealthy part. Like, how do you find that balance of accepting it but not feeling bad? You know, it's I feel like that's hard to navigate. I know. I think like the thing that I just like to make known is that it's not my money, it's my parents' money. So mm-hmm. Like, it's not like I can go and spend whatever I want all the time and all this stuff. It's just, uh, you know, there's some situations where people will like they it's almost like they know, but they don't know at the same time. Like um, I just I started a new job and I pull up the first day in my car and everyone's like, Oh, whose car is that in the parking lot? Like who has that nice car, blah, 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 because everyone is driving like more modest cars. And it's awkward when people ask like, is that your car? How do you afford it? Like, Mm. I I don't know what to say. (laughs) So (laughs) it's uh, like my, my dad bought it. (laughs) Yeah. It's like my daddy bought it. (laughs) Yeah. That's so (laughs) strange. And you're probably not just going to turn around and be like, Oh, we won the lot. Like it's just a, I don't know. It's a, it's a position you truly can't prepare for. Um, but to, to your point, like you are working like for everyone listening, she's on her lunch break right now. So I'm curious yeah. about, um, you know, I understand that you kind of distributed to family members, which is cool. Moved homes. The garage is full of nice cars. Um, but you're still working. Is your family still working? Like, how did you guys kind of approach, um, you know, that I guess like work ethic, having jobs, making your own money. What, what's that dynamic? Yeah. So, um, I mean, when we were growing up, I guess it kind of has to go back to this. Like, again, I wouldn't say we were, well, I guess we were like looking back on it now as an adult, like, I think we were struggling. Um, you know, we never had like any name brand, anything, whether that be like, even just like 
fruit roll up or like dunkaroos like we didn't you know we couldn't even have that most of the time those were like very rare like treats like we we couldn't really afford too much um and like my parents just like hustled my whole childhood like my dad hustled so hard he he was a like a great businessman and everything and um I think it was just kind of instilled in like my sister and I that as soon as you can work you start working so I actually got my first job in the eighth grade um, and I've just never stopped working since. So yeah, I was the only one that was working in the eighth grade at my school, like didn't know anyone else. And then I worked all throughout high school, like four or five days a week after school. Um, and then again, all throughout, uh, undergrad and university, I, I worked like crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, so it was just never something that was like, not in me like I've always been like a worker like I love to work I, I really really love to work and it's clearly not anything that I would ever stop because my dad is not the type of person that would say don't work ever again I'm gonna just support you and everything that's just it's silly and my sister's on like a great career path as well um at this point in time my parents are both retired but this is just recent um they just retired last year like in the summer so it's not like something that happened immediately um, I mean, not, not to say that they haven't given us money. Cause of course they do, they do like help and support us. Um, but they don't offer to give us money all the time. And we also don't like to ask. So it's like a weird balance, but, uh, like my sister's still in school. They pay for her school. They pay for her rent, which is like amazing. It's, it's good for her. Um, and we got, um, I don't know what it's called there for you guys in the States, but TFSA accounts. So it's like they accumulate money through like stocks basically. Okay. So, mm -hmm. but, so we have a, like, we obviously have like financial advisors and uh, like wealth portfolio managers that like take care of that for us. So they like, I, I don't touch it. They just, my parents put in a sum of money and um, they make sure that it, it grows as big as possible, which is cool. But I've had it drilled into my head like a million times. Like you are not allowed to use this until you're ready to retire. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> So no, yeah, that's, I mean, that's amazing. And like, I was going to ask about that because what they're essentially doing is making sure that like, it's, you will obviously reap the benefits of this in ways you could not even imagine, because if they put like a, a like a large sum of money into an account like that, by the time you're 50 or whatever, like, it's going to be just like millions of dollars. Like it doesn't even have to be that much right now. And uh, you're still young. So by the time, like 30 years would be just like, you know, they would, they're just like hooking it up. This is exactly how I would win the lottery too, by the way, like everything that you're describing, honestly, I would probably be a little more irresponsible than what I've heard so far, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, there are like more irresponsible aspects of it. Like, of course there's like purchases that just are a little bit crazy. Like my dad, he's always just been, he loves to spend money. He loves to shop. Like, you know, he's like, it's like having a sister, another sister, my dad. He's mm. just great. So, uh, <laughs> Can you tell he's wealthy? Like when he steps into a room, like, does he, Oh, oh okay. <laughs> he's like the guy that's always wearing, like, I hate to, <laughs> I hate to put him on blast like this. He's like the guy that's always wearing like a blazer and a pocket square. And like, he's one of those. Love that. <laughs> okay. Okay. His brogues and stuff. It's like, okay, dad, relax. Like we went to, this is actually a funny story. Well, this is one of the, one of the benefits that I love to reap, we went to uh, a playoff NHL game last season. Am just amazing Ooh. seats. Amazing seats. Just, yeah. I'm still talk about, I still look at the pictures and want to cry, but um, you know, everyone's dressed normally or they're wearing jerseys or whatever. And my dad's like basically in a three piece suit. Like he just looks <laughs> so funny. <laughs> it's like, like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, yeah. Right. So everyone's like, I don't know what this guy's doing here. Like he clearly doesn't want to watch the game. So <laughs> are there any purchases that you think he's been regretful of? Um, I don't think so. So I don't know. I've actually never had that conversation with him. Like maybe some watches, like he's a watch guy, but again, like he just buys so much like clothes and shoes and uh, like, he's, he's also not the type of guy that he's like, I'm going to go buy like a Gucci suit. Like that's not him. He doesn't care about like name brands. Um, yeah. Like maybe, maybe a watch that he doesn't 
doesn't wear so often or something Mm -hmm. but uh he's pretty like careful he he's pretty careful with stuff and he doesn't get something unless he really wants it like the only thing that he does that i think is absolutely ridiculous is he's one of those like middle-aged guys that if his laptop isn't working or his phone isn't working like instead of just doing an update or like troubleshooting on the apple website he just buys like a new laptop <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. honestly same and i did not win the lotto also joe yeah. i don't i don't think joe's was... ret- joe hasn't returned a thing in his life like never he could, never it's never. just it's bad yeah if i buy a pair of pants even if they're like 150 dollars, and i get them and they don't fit i'm like well what am i gonna do i'm gonna return this and i just i just i just can't what am i, I never gonna stand anything. online yeah yeah, that's <laughs> not even staying online. Box. You just mail it back and you get your money back. But I just won't even do that. I was like, oh, I got to tape a box. Like, fuck this. Like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Go to the post office. That's the worst part, going to the post office. Yeah, so could definitely yeah, no. relate And to I was that. like that my whole life. Even before I had a job, maybe 15 years old, if I get anything that's not even... If I'm at a restaurant and they give me food that's not mine, I'm like, well, I'm eating this. Like, I just can't yeah. send anything back. It's just not in me. <laughs> No, I get that too. Very humble beginnings. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's like Greg was talking about, like very interesting to understand like the sort of like your mindset behind this, because you have to know in the back of your mind, like, and I always thought about this with people who have like a really crazy inheritance who, uh, you know, and, and sometimes that's insane. Like they know like, oh, their parents put like $10 million in a fucking account somewhere for them. Like ha- what is, I guess, driving you to be like, I know that this money is here. So my, I'll never have like, I always have financial security, which is a big, you know, stress for a lot of people who have to deal with paying their own, you know, bills and everything. So what is the motivating factor for you uh, moving forward in your career? Like, what is it that drives you? Because it, I know that like financial security has to be a part of it, but it's not, it's no longer like the biggest part is like, I want to have a good job because I have to be able to like afford a lifestyle. Like, you know that you could, Um, do that. So what is, would you say the biggest motivator for you in building your own career? Um, well, again, I think it's just the fact that it, at the end of the day, it's not my money. Um, and like, like you said, like there is money that's put away from me for me. That's like growing exponentially, which is like amazing. But again, I've been told a million and one times that I'm not touching that for like 20 or 30 years. But, um, like, again, I think it's just, my work ethic just growing up before this happened. I just love to work and I'm passionate about doing something for myself. Like I don't want to be known or even for myself knowing that I'm only what my dad won by accident. I I just, (laughs) it just doesn't feel good personally. Like I just like to have my own accomplishments and it feels good to spend your own money. Like, yes, it it feels good to spend other people's money, but it also kind of leaves me with like a sick feeling. Like I don't enjoy asking them for money and I really don't ask them for money ever because it's not fun. It's awkward. Um, It's just, you know, even though, we do have money, uh, you still feel like, oh, I want to pay you back. It's just, you know, it's, Mm -hmm. it's not, it's not a great feeling. And yeah, I don't know. I think it's just a lot of just wanting something that's yours and not someone else's. And totally. I think that's like, yeah. But at the end of the day, like I need to live my own life. Like I'm an adult and all that good stuff and also I, like I don't want this to sound super strange but because I know that it's a lot of money but it's not that much money like people have won way more and you know I'm sure like whoever like Bobby John down the street might have more money just from working so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's like an odd it's an odd thing because it is a lot of money and it's a lot of money for us and it changed our lives but uh some people it's nothing and to some people it's everything. So, uh, that's a, yeah, no, that's a really balanced perspective. And you know, it, it sounds like you genuinely mean it. Like you're not just saying that cause it's, you know, sounds like what you should be saying. Cause you're someone whose family won the lotto. It seems like you, you know, really feel that and believe that, which is awesome. And I'm curious, ha- what have been some of the most negative I guess, results of winning, because 
like we talked about a little bit before, kind of judgment. Like, I'm just wondering if any relationships have changed with you or your friends or family. You know, I know family, family's tricky. Like everyone could get money, but maybe there's people who think they deserve more, people who are left out, um, you know, open to like scams or people coming with ideas. You're probably getting pitched on stuff all the time. Like of all of that, you know, what have been some of the most negative experiences um, as a result of winning this money? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I mean, like very light, I would say negative things are just, you know, random people coming out of the woodwork that, you know, I went to school with like high school with whatever, just saying random kind of rude shit to me. Um, that's not great, but I think probably the worst thing that's happened is, uh, we've actually got scammed and, uh, like catfished by people pretending to be our family asking for money. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it worked? Um, no. So they were both like very odd situations. Um, it didn't work, but it's just, it's scary to know that people know the details. So I think more than anything, it's like, I don't know, they're major red flags. And and this just happened recently and it's been like coming up on five years for Mm -hmm. five years. So it's just like really scary that it feels like everything's settled now. And like, it's been in the last four or five months that we have like, people pretending to be our family on random numbers, messaging us and emailing us and making up these ridiculous stories to say that they need money. It's and like naming people by name. Like that's the part that like actually really scares me. Um, Mm -hmm. And like, I know Joe, you were talking about on the basement yard on Monday about how like a lot of people have to go like incognito and stuff and kind of disappear. And they do say that like they do say basically like change all your contact information and drop people out of your life that you think are going to be negative and like the first thing that you should do is like contact someone at a bank to have someone um kind of look over your finances and everything because uh, like I can see how things can get super super tricky like especially in this instance um like I'll give one example of a catfish or as well, I don't even know what to call it, but, uh, my aunt, um, got a WhatsApp message from, um, um, what she thought was a member of family that we have, um, overseas in the UK. And, uh, it was a different number, but he was claiming, he was saying, Oh yeah, it's like your uncle, whatever. So, um, my great uncle, my dad's uncle, and uh, we're struggling really, really hard. And could you please ask your brother, my dad, for money? Um, I need to put my son through school. Like he needs to go to university and it's going to cost this much and everything. And it's just, that's what actually really freaks me out because they know too much. Mm. Um, Like intimate details to use against you. And no, it is scary. Like you you're just a target essentially when people find out you're a target from people willing to, you know, scam You're a target from people who just maybe feel entitled to some of the money because they feel like you guys aren't entitled to it because of how it was made. And I'm sure just so much judgment and hate of people who just don't even know you as a person. And so it's, yeah, I'm sure that's tricky. And I'm also curious, how do you bring this up with new relationships? Like, I don't know if you have a partner or, you know, new friends that you make coworkers. How do you navigate that? Like, how do you sit down and tell someone this for the first time? Yeah. So it's very, very, very rare that I tell people like very rare. So, um, like, of course my closest friends that I've had since I was now in, in diapers, they know, um, relationships. It's very tricky. Um, I've had, yeah, I just went through a bad experience with telling a guy that I was seeing and, uh, he, it felt like actually after the fact that I told him, which I definitely shouldn't have told him, by the way, it was just, uh, you know, it was (laughs) like, I definitely shouldn't have told him. I was just too excited and not sober and I just said it because I trusted him. Um, you were at the bar, like drinks for everyone. It's like there's 500 <laughs> people here. 
<laughs> I'll get this round babe. Don't you worry. So, so um, yeah, he kind of, after I told him that, I was like, I think that he's going to be normal. Like, he had a normal reaction. Like, everything should be fine. And, uh, no, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't fine. He kind of, uh, it kind of seemed like his driving force after to, like, want to make things work. Um because it was brought up a lot and he had a lot of uncomfortable questions to ask after the fact. Um, so that wasn't great. Um, but new friends, coworkers, no, like I'm not telling anyone, Mm -hmm. no one knows. It's, it's actually like, we have been talking about like in my office about that, uh, that Powerball, And I think like they were kind of pooling together money to buy tickets and so everyone's been talking about it for so long like my my boss actually he's obsessed with buying lottery tickets and he buys them like weekly and he's always talking about uh what he would do if he won and he's like he's like i would give you a million dollars for sure and i would get you a new car and and it's like a joke but it's so hard sometimes to keep my mouth shut because i am so sometimes I get so loose lipped about my personal stuff. So I really have to keep myself in check and be like, not the right place, not the right time, not the right person. Like I can't just tell everyone. Um, but I, like, I wouldn't want anyone to know because I think that there'd be way too much of, well, why are you working? Why are you here? We don't even, you don't even need us. Blah, 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 blah. You're too good for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also do people like, do they like you for you? I'm just trying to think of the things that I would I feel like I would start to have trust issues is what it would be like, especially if you were trying to meet someone new to date, it's like, well, are they just trying to use me because of money? Or like, what if I find someone that I really like, but then they're not comfortable with this dynamic or me potentially having or ending up with more money than them, which is, you know, a lot of insecurity, but it's, uh, it just makes it tougher, I guess, trying to get to know someone and to, you know, be yourself. And it, you want to be able to share, you know, about your life. That's the whole point of being with someone ultimately. Right. Yeah. I, I actually like don't go into any, um, like dating scenarios with any guy expecting that they know. Like, I just, I always assume that people don't know just because why would they know? I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it was years ago and it's not something that is still like a topic of conversation. And I, like, there was, there was articles about it for sure. And th- like they had that, really silly picture everywhere of you know you go and you get the really big check and it's like my dad looking at the ball like check and everything but um I like yeah so I always assume that people don't know so I mean I think that it would actually make for a really uncomfortable situation if I found out after the fact that they knew and I wasn't the one that told them um Mm. but even like relationships that were going on during and like when it happened yeah like there was definitely some tension with friends even that it made them really uncomfortable or I think that maybe jealousy came out in anger almost um so yeah like it was it was a struggle at first there was like a few friends of mine that didn't feel comfortable for their own reasons and uh you know I I think that everything happens for a reason and you know at the time maybe it wasn't a good time for them to go through this with me because at the same time like I kind of wanted support like even though it seemed like I was set like I still wanted support from you know my friends and people that were close to me and uh yeah like you definitely have to tread lightly um you never want to be someone that's used for something that's just that's such a icky feeling Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Not only that, but I think like the the craziest aspect of it is like obviously your lifestyle. You guys can choose what you do with that, with the money. But like, I don't think anything prepares you for that spotlight, especially if you're not used to that. Like, your your life could like changes overnight in so many ways. One of them being that like once people find out, then you're that person, and now people just treat you completely differently and people will stare at you and people will like know shit about you. And even if they don't bring it up or whatever, like you were saying, like there's people who found out who your fucking random aunt was or uncle was and was just hitting you up. And it's like, how the fuck do they even know this guy? Like people will look into your life and know all this shit about you. And that's just not something that most people have to deal with, like dealing with that and dealing with like, usually you just meet someone, you just, can give them the benefit of the doubt that they're being genuine. When something like this happens, it's like, okay, 
now I have to do some due diligence here in figuring out if this person is genuine or not, where in the past you didn't have to do that. So mm -hmm. nothing really prepares you for that sort of thing too, um, where it's like, you know, winning the lottery and Greg's, <laughs> Greg's been on record saying, he's like, I fucking do not want to win the lottery. Oh. Like Greg doesn't want to <laughs> win it at all. I'll just but, never play, uh, honestly. Yeah. Like <laughs> I would like to win the lottery. I want that to be said, by the way. So if, if there is a God, just know that God. Uh, but I feel like that would be a difficult thing for people to just be launched into the spotlight of like, yeah, here it is. And also, uh, you know, something like, you know, money is like, people get to hide that. They get to conceal that part of their life where people can just assume, like even if you have a good job, you're a lawyer. Like there's levels to being a lawyer. You can assume that someone makes a lot of money, but some people make half a million dollars. Some people make $120,000. So it's like, there is a difference there. So you can kind of hide behind, you know, a generality. But when you win the lottery, or if you're like a professional athlete and your contract is like fucking, mm -hmm. you know, public knowledge, like that changes the way that people look at you because they could literally go and see how much money you have and then make assumptions about you of like, oh, she probably sucks or she probably thinks she's better than us or she thinks that she's so fucking cool now. It's her dad's money or whatever. And meanwhile, you're over here being like, I don't really, I was like, I just want to go to my job and I fucking, you know, deal with all this shit. I'm not <laughs> over here just like buying Birkin bags every three days. So it's like, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it, that's a difficult thing to deal with. Like the fact that people are just going to make judgments about you no matter what, even if they're completely wrong and it's never going to change until you meet them in person. So that's just oh. something you got to deal with from now on. No, absolutely. Like, uh, not that I know anything about being like someone who has any type of like clout or notoriety, whatever fame, like, uh, you, you can almost kind of try to compare it to, yeah, you said like professional athlete or like, I don't know, someone on social media, like I'm sure like going back to your hometown and everyone there sees everything that you do on social media and they know about this stuff. It's like, they saw you hanging out with so-and-so and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, when they come up to you, it's like, is it genuine? And they're like, Oh, I haven't seen you since graduation or prom or whatever. And how are you doing? Like, is it because they genuinely care or is it because they want to get close to you for certain reasons? And, um, like, unfortunately, like there's some things that, like you said, money can hide and there's some things like you just can't hide or it's harder to hide. Like, uh, I can't hide my car and my parents can't hide their cars. Like, that's just a fact. And I don't think anyone expects you to like not change your lifestyle a little bit also, you know? Cause what's the point of winning almost if you're just going to completely hide that and like you know, not yeah, get a nice car, not that. change homes. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, uh, like people don't really, I don't know. There, there's just like some things where it's a little bit like, okay, like maybe I know that you're using me now. Like if we get into a conversation, it's like, Oh, I see that you, you guys have a place like, uh, here, like, uh, do you mind if I use it? Right. Right. Yeah. No, it's, it, it really is like, it's just fascinating to hear about. And, you know, b before we wrap this up, I do have one final question that I'm curious about. Do you guys still play the lottery? Uh, <laughs> yeah, every single week, because actually I hate to say this, um, like this isn't the first time that my dad's won before. What? <laughs> he has like what? very good luck. Like he has very good luck. Um, yeah, he won in like 2000. 12 or 2013 but uh he won like 22 grand oh okay okay so but that's still very good luck for the lottery <laughs> yeah he does he has like extremely good luck so uh <laughs> so he's just gonna keep shooting his shot yeah, yeah I mean, he to. <laughs> he's like he's like i've gotten two for two so like it may as well go again <laughs> that's wild yeah. wow okay i was not expecting that answer um but that's that's crazy good Good for him, I guess. He's lucky. Yeah, we, we, we appreciate you coming on and, and talking to us because it, it is an interesting dynamic. And with the, you know, the historic Powerball that we just had, you know, I think this is a really cool topic to think about because you don't really meet anyone who wins the fucking lottery. You just hear about them on the news and you're like, no, nah, they're dead in a ravine somewhere because they bought too many fucking whatever. You know, <laughs> like it, it, you don't really like hear this side of it. So, ravine. I mean, it is... It is <laughs> A ravine, yes. I don't know why that's so um, funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, so thank you so much for coming on and uh, talking to us today. Thanks so much for having me. It's it's just it feels good to actually like get it all out of my system because I feel like I don't talk about it often. So it's like uh, it's cathartic. 
Nice. That's good to hear. And, you know, no judgment from us. Um, we appreciate you, you know, getting so personal, sharing that. And yeah, hopefully, hopefully that feels good. And uh, we wish you the best of luck with everything. We kept you from your job for too long. So go get back to work. And uh, I would make a joke luck. about not needing the money, but that's just so <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. I love it. Thank you, guys. All right. No have, a have a good Thank one. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. Before we get to our final thoughts, we do have some sponsors for today. The first one being BetterHelp. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, which is online counseling or therapy. Uh, it's the biggest one on the internet, the big, the largest therapy service. Uh, it has matched millions of people with licensed uh, and professional and vetted therapists. Um, and I think it's great. I mean, I've been in therapy for a couple of years, and I think that it's super helpful um, for anyone, I think it would be. So definitely something I recommend. Also, with BetterHelp, uh, they're great because they make it very easy to switch from therapist to therapist. Not only that, but you can start talking to one in just under 48 hours. So there's a very quick sort of sign up and uh, like launch uh, situation, which is great. Uh, no waiting rooms, uh, you know, no sitting in traffic on the way to, the, to, to your session or anything like that. Um, also, the biggest thing, uh, it's way more affordable than in-person therapy, which can be very expensive. Um, and on top of it already being uh, affordable, you will also get 10% off of your first month if you go to betterhelp.com slash OPL. That is betterhelp.com slash OPL. Uh, that'll save you 10% off of your first month. So if you want to dabble in therapy and, uh, you know, get into it, uh, BetterHelp has a great service where they will cater to you and help you. It's customized. So, uh, yeah, definitely go check them out, betterhelp.com slash OPL uh, to do that. Uh, and lastly here, we have... Manscaped. So Manscaped, I think, will be a great gift for, uh, you know, your your boyfriend or your buddy or whoever, your dad. Uh, and they're going to help you stay, you know, up to code, I'll say, uh, downstairs. Um, and, and they're the best on the market when it comes to that. They have a Platinum Package 4.0, which I don't even know what's in it yet, but it sounds incredible. Also, I do have Manscaped and I do use it. And it came with a T-shirt and that T-shirt is very uh comfortable. Um, but they offer a handful of their liquid formulations, which are, they have a shampoo, body washes, uh, they have deodorants, uh, gels, exfoliants, they have everything you need. Um, and they have uh, a new cologne to preserve cologne, uh, that brings a light breezy woodsy feel and gives that fresh tree scent even after, uh, Christmas is over. Um, they also have a thing called a body buffer, which is, you know, going to help you clean your body. It's like it would take place of a, a loofah, if you will. Um, so they will take care of everything for you downstairs and in, you know, in your whole routine. Uh, you know, so you definitely should check them out. They have, uh, like I said, they're the best, they're the best. I, I love Manscaped. They're amazing. Um, and they're here to make holiday shopping a blast by giving products that, that you'll love and also will make some people laugh. Um, so get 20% off and free shipping with the code OPL at manscaped.com. That is 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com slash OPL. Um, and yeah, go check out all the products they have because they have, you know, products, I believe one of them is called the Weed Whacker, and you can imagine what that does. Um, they also have boxers. They have great things. So it's, you know, especially stocking stuffer type of gifts. This is what you want to do. So go check them out. Again, 20% off with free shipping uh, when you use the code OPL at manscaped.com. Fuck, dude. I'm trying to win the lottery. That would be fucking sick. I'm really not. I know you aren't because you. I, I want to earn a fuck you. I would do good things wanna, with it. Yeah, so, so would I. But like, I get that. That, like wanna... that chance to you know give back to people, charity. Like, yes, I understand. Maybe I'll stop. Dude, saying Dude, I, I will say this. I will say this. Like, and I was serious about it. I think that. Um, and I was thinking about this the other day, and I've been honestly waiting for a fucking moment to talk about this. But okay. People, I, I, it's an unfortunate position Buckle to be up, in. Buckle up, everyone. We might, we might be here for no, a little while longer. No, no, no. I was just no, going to... I'm very curious <laughs> to hear this. I love post-episode no, rants. It's, it's, you know what it is? It's, it, this is like rich people problems, but I, th I, I think about like 
people who have like fifty million dollars or more or something like that, right? Okay. When you're in a position like that, especially if you win the lottery and everyone's already just like, yo, you didn't earn it, you just fucking won it, you're lucky, like and then anything you do from that point on has that filter over it. That's very mm. difficult to deal with mm. because you can't like you can't the only reason why she feels bad about saying like, yeah, I got a Mercedes is like, because she knows how that looks to people. People are going to be like, oh really? Now you're driving a Mercedes. It's like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this money, dude? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, go on a vacation. That's why I was saying I'd be a little more irresponsible than that, bro. I'd be fucking going crazy with the money. If I, if I just won $17 million, like, dude, forget it. Like, not that I would go like, you know, ape shit, but definitely once a year, I would be a fucking... Yeah stupid pretentious asshole somewhere it would almost be weird not to do that like if you're if we're being honest with ourselves and i it's just she seems really level-headed it it feels like this is this will teach her more about finances security like if she stays in that mindset of this is money that i have like she has obviously a lot more perks and luxuries now and she's not denying that um but like if the work ethic is sort of unchanged and she's able to like increase her financial literacy if she's able to do something with that money to also then give back to maybe her kids one day and kind of pass that down right because like she said it's it's a ton of money like we're not saying that's not a ton of money but it's it's the amount of money that if you're going to enhance your lifestyle you still have to be aware you still have to be cautious you still have to you know of course you can lose that money obviously so yeah it's it's not irresponsible it's not an irresponsible amount of money especially when you trickle it down to just her Yes, exactly, exactly. So I, it seems like she she kind of understands that, um, and yeah, like I believe her, you know, when she says that. And it's just fascinating because, like we said, there's just nothing that can prepare you for how it's going to change people's perception of you and things like that. And yeah, you said you know rich pre- rich people problems, and people might be like, who gives a fuck? She has money, whatever. Like, and that's yeah. just going to happen. But you know, it's just fascinating to, to hear from someone in that position. I feel like you never, everyone dreams about winning the lottery, what they would do. So many people play the lottery. If you look up stats, it's crazy how many people play the yeah. lottery every day. Like this is something people want to happen to them, but then they also judge people so harshly when it does happen to them. So right. it's, 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 it's strange. Like, oh, you're going to do interesting. that. Or, or then uh, suddenly people feel like entitled to, like I like help or something like that. It's like, what the fuck dude? Like mm. I, wi- bro, one of the reasons why I wish I would win the lottery is just so people can hit me up because I would have a fucking, I would clear my schedule just to answer all these ridiculous text messages that would come in and just be like, bro, fucking no. Like I would, I would get so much joy out of telling people no, it would be amazing. But then I would also walk down the street and be like, homeless man, not anymore. Here's a hundred grand. <laughs> If I had a billion dollars, they would do stupid shit like that all the time. All right. But, Sounds um, like a little little spite, something you wanted to get off your chest about people? Or? No, no, no. No. <laughs> no, I just feel like, um, no, like you it, said, like it's people unreasonable want to win the what lottery. people at. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, yo, d- win the lottery, but be humble about it. But like, okay. But, but also you give me some work- money, maybe. Yeah. And yeah, then, all right, if I'm being humble about it, why the fuck should I give you a hundred thousand dollars? <laughs> like, fuck you. You know what I mean? Like, what are you talking about? Like, want me to be humble about it? Not that I'm throwing it in people's faces, but yeah, I buy a car. I can't hide my fucking car, dude. But what am I supposed to do? I just won $17 million. You think I'm not going to buy fucking whatever car my daughter wants for her? Right. Of course I am. What the fuck would be the point of having the money? And that's another thing. If you have money, and you're just one of these people that just has money, has a good job, and just save it, save it, save it. Save it. Bro, have some fucking fun, would you? That's the whole <laughs> point of this life. The money isn't the life. The money is what provides, like, the money is actually freedom. So mm. use your freedoms. You know, go on a fucking vacation, get a chef. And if you have $17 million, you're not even going to know that money is gone. For sure. And you should do that twice a year. At <laughs> least. At least. It's fucking go crazy. And these are the rules. Put it in the market. <laughs> this is the rules to winning the lottery. Um, yeah. But no, I'm curious. Like, I also love, like, we don't talk about this enough. The comment section on YouTube of the show, like, it's amazing. And, like, we see it and we see the dialogue and the conversations that happen. So, you know, we, we never say this either. But, like, super curious, you know, what you guys think about this. Like, how you guys would approach winning. Like, let us know. We, like, this is such an interesting interesting conversation to have with people and i feel like people have like a lot of different takes on what they just heard and i will say this i have met a bunch of people who have money and a lot of them 
are way worse than this girl. And I really do believe that the way that her family handled this, outside of the, the daily pocket squares, because I don't know about that, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I feel like that's the way you do it. You know, you break off some money for your family members and you fucking are like, yeah, I'm going to like get sick playoff seats. I'm going to, yeah. we're going to go on a vacation. We're going to get cars. For I want to know too, nice house. We, cause we didn't give her the chance to say it, but there was mention in the email too of charities that her family also kind of immediately started looking into and giving money to. So right. there is that aspect as well. But yes, it seems like a pretty diverse portfolio of taking care of family, having some fun, like, right. and sustaining a work ethic and an understanding you know, of course. which is, yeah, it's, I mean, from what we gathered, it, it does feel like a right way to do it. Yeah, it does. If one of, one of the right ways to do it, I'd say would, would be this. That's it. But like, yeah. So anyone out there, uh, also we have her email, so we're a hit her up, see if she wants to give us any money, whatever, do we'll figure it out. We'll <laughs> I can find out. I'll uh, take some investment <laughs> for the show. It's an investment, you know? Um, <laughs> no, but uh, if you're out there and you've won the lottery, also hit us up. We were trying to make as many friends as possible who have won the lottery. Um, no, but if you want to be a guest on our show, hit us up. Our, po- our uh, email is oplpodcast um, at gmail.com. So hit us up and uh, we'll sketch something out if you want to be a guest. So hit us up. Yeah, like Joe said, put us in your wills. It's fine. We'll accept it. <laughs> and um, yeah, guys, you know, thanks. We're, I know... Again, don't know exactly when this is coming up, but I know that we're coming to the end of this season. Another awesome season um, of growth. Really cool conversations. The support from you guys, like the OGs who have been there for so long. And again, don't know when this is coming out. We're approaching 100,000 subscribers. So let's help us hit that milestone. That's super cool. And uh, just thank you guys. Like many, many more seasons to come. And uh, that's, that's it before I get too emotional. Yeah, that is all. See you guys next time.